Hello everyone. Uh, it's been a while since you've seen the uh, computer, but uh, this is the progress we've been making. I've been making. Uh, actually, I kind of almost gave up because uh, of uh, this stupid LCD screen, but uh, I'll get to that soon. Uh, so there's some new additions. Really, all that happened was I connected the bus lines uh, and got this thing wired up. And uh, as you know, uh, from the earlier videos, this is actually a 6102 ripped out from a Nintendo. So I have two sound lines from uh, two sound channels. One's uh, two square waves, a triangle, and this line has a triangle wave, uh, PCM, uh, so you can do sampling, and uh, what's the other one? Noise generator. Those two lines get merged right over here. And then they go through an amplifier in this little tiny chip. Uh, there's some circuitry to get the noise out. And then I pump the uh, signal into this rail. This is not actually positive, but it's a sound rail. And this has been grounded. So I can just take a PC speaker and hook it up and you can get some sound. And the LCD's been hooked up. I've also prepared a spot for a serial chip. It's a 6551 uh, ACIA, or yes, ACIA, uh, Asynchronous Communications Interface Adapter, uh, made by Moss, but this version is actually made by Rockwell, who made a lot of Moss's chips. Um, Moss is, of course, the guys who made uh, the 6502. Uh, and then, so we got our 1.8 something 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 clock that's going to generate the, uh, the baud rate. Uh, and we have here are the lines. These are uh, uh, transfer and receive lines, plus also I think uh, clear to send and whatever that other line is. I don't know. They're uh, they're going into this little chip here, and that converts the TTL voltages from zero to five to negative twelve, positive twelve, that the uh, RS two thirty two uses. And then I could just get a serial cable and plug it into a computer and talk to the uh, 6502. Uh, now I'm kind of worried that I got the right clock because, well, first of all, it's gigantic. It says it's the, the, the seller on, is on eBay about this, and you know, it's kind of hard to see, but this it is, says 1.4, 1 1.84, 320 megahertz. And just to compare, this is a 21 megahertz clock. Uh, which I'm going to use for a video chip. I'll get to that later, but uh, I'm assuming it's just because it's old. Because seriously, oops, seriously, this thing does look kind of run down. Uh, so I'm hoping it's just because it's old and the technology got better and the clocks shrank. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep throwing that. And get back in there. So, uh, oops, wrong, wrong. Sorry about this. Uh, Okay, the clock's in. Um, so yes, there's going to be a, next thing I'm going to do is probably make a machine go machine code monitor uh, or some kind of operating system or something uh, to interface with the uh, the computer. But for now, I'll show you what this baby can do. Let me just get uh, sorry, I've got a uh, PC speaker from a just some random IBM comp compatible. Just plug that into ground, into the power rail, or sound rail. Oh, oh no, pins are already, I soldered this line together, pins are already getting broken. Now I have the power plug here. There we go. And... Okay, this is, just to inform some people, this is what's called an unknown state. Uh, the CPU needs to, is pretty much confused right now. The voltages aren't set. So uh, what you have to do is send a reset signal so it can initialize itself. Uh, as you can see, my LCD says some random stuff. I'm going to actually turn off the light because it looks better that way. So uh, it doesn't really say anything, and there's garbage coming out of the speaker. So we're going to reset the CPU. Uh-oh. There we go. I got music. And a little message here. Let's go to the computer. 
it is actual true NES sound uh, that came from the, uh, from the chip. Now, I didn't actually make the, uh, the sound code. I took a demo source code, so then they ripped out all the uh, video code and uh, threw it into a ROM. I did make those LCD code, though. Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know really enough to make actual music for the uh, NES generator, but I do know how to make tones, which are kind of boring. So, uh, this is sort of the level of video. Sounds more like a sync chip, actually. The sync chip is this kind of sound effect. Alright. Unplug that. Let's put that back here. Okay. So yeah, that's what the uh, let's turn the light back on. What the uh, computer could do. Now, as I said, this this isn't actually just in place anywhere. I'm just using this as storage, I guess you could say. I'm just putting it there. But uh, around here, or maybe on a new board, uh, I'm going to be uh, having this thing. I was thinking about the TMS-99, I think it's 1.8, but uh, this is the uh, upper, like the next version. Uh, it was in the uh, MSX, which was a, a Japanese computer, uh, actually standardized by Microsoft. So if you actually see on the chip itself, which is pretty funny, that's hard to see, there you go, Microsoft. Uh, made by Yamaha, of course, though, for the MSX. Uh, so yeah, you have actually a lot of stuff, uh, 120 kilobytes of video RAM, uh, as you can see, clocks 21 megahertz, just like the clock I have here. Uh, sprites, you get 33 sprites, 16 colors, uh, each per scan line. Uh, so the uh, earlier version only had, I think it was four. So uh, let's see, what else does this thing have? 256 by 192 or some other weird resolutions. A customizable palette, which I don't think the the earlier one did. Yeah. And various modes, various screen modes. So yeah, that is the chip I'm thinking about actually right now putting in. But until then, I right now I just want to write up the machine code monitor. Uh, and yeah, so that's the computer. I thank you for watching and. Uh, if you have any questions or of your own for your own, mind you, I'm not an expert about this. This is a little hobby I'm doing. Uh, try it. I might help you. Anyway, thanks a lot.